for a respiratory disease that has nothing to do with toilet paper, things sure did escalate quickly. This became the breakout star of the COVID-19 pandemic. A global phenomenon that sparked thousands of memes. Even the Prime Minister had to weigh in. There's no need to stock up with instant noodles, or tin food, or toilet paper, as some people did yesterday. Four months since the first round of panic buying, restrictions on the sale of toilet paper are still in place in Singapore. So, I really want to know, how did the humble toilet roll become such a prized commodity? The earliest reports of toilet paper mania came out from Hong Kong. And some believe it started with this. Hong Kong actress Griselda Jung sent a voice recording to a private group chat which was leaked to the public. It went viral and people went ballistic. It wasn't long before police were hunting an armed gang which robbed a shop of 600 rolls of toilet paper. Now, not that many people would admit to stocking up on toilet rolls, but I managed to convince someone to talk to me. So, I heard that Kenneth rushed to supermarkets to stock up on toilet paper when the Dorscon level was raised from yellow to orange back in February. So Kenneth, at that point in time, you had toilet paper at home, right? So why did you still go out to buy toilet paper? Because when I see people rushing for it, automatically, you know, you will also have the urge. You also feel that, oh, you know, uh, I, I will also have to do it. You know, um, mm. what, what if, say, if uh, people start holding, buying, and then left nothing for, for us to use, you know, for, for me to buy, you yep. know, at the, late, uh, at the later point of time. Do you think maybe you could show me like, um what your stocks of toilet paper are like at home? Certainly. Just give me a moment, eh? Just follow Thank me. Thank you. Yeah. So, room. Okay. It's all here. Okay. And some more here. Wow. Yep. And your household is just you and your mom. So, you have about 50 to 60 toilet rolls at home at the moment. When you go to the supermarket, do you still buy toilet rolls? At this current moment, I still buy. You know, uh, if I see that, you know, the price is reasonable, Mm -hmm. And if the quality is, is good, love it. Okay, so do you think that um, keeping uh, toilet rolls was actually justified on your part? Yes, because uh, Singapore basically everything is all imported. We, we hardly have our own resources. Yeah, in, in terms of uh, any supplies, be it toilet rolls or anything, etc. So if there's one thing this pandemic has taught us, it's that we're reliant on global supply. I wonder if there are companies that manufacture toilet paper right here in Singapore. I reached out to Sunlight Paper. It's among the country's top five distributors of paper products. At the point of filming this, we were five weeks into Singapore's extended circuit breaker period. But the company is still operating as it's deemed an essential service. I've arranged to meet Deputy CEO Mark Chua. Hi, Mark. Right. Nice to meet you. Thank, thanks so much for meeting up, man. No problem. I've been tr actually trying quite hard to look for a toilet paper manufacturer in yeah. Singapore, and it seems quite difficult. Yeah, it's hard to find because we're the only one in Singapore. And why is that? Well, uh, in the past, there were actually quite a big uh, number of players in Singapore, mm -hmm. but because of the cost of production in Singapore, they actually shifted their production to uh, countries like Malaysia and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for us, we are still able to sustain our business here, and actually, we're expanding. Yeah. Wow. I asked Mark for a tour of the facilities. We are upgrading our facilities. Mm -hmm. As mm. you can see, the construction which is undergoing now. Yeah. But due to the COVID-19, everything has been halted and delayed. We only get to see our warehouse at this point of time. Hey, hang on, Mark. These are the toilet rolls that I would usually find in the public toilets. Correct. But yeah, how yeah. about those kind of smaller rolls that you find at home? Do you mm. actually make those? We don't because we do not have the machineries for it. So in the event there's a catastrophe and Singapore runs out of toilet paper, yep. Would you be able to supply uh, home-use toilet paper in the supermarkets? Yes, mm -hmm. but we will need to actually repackage 
these jumbo rolls into smaller packets. Mm -hmm. If not, those uh, poor aunties, they are, it's too heavy for them to carry. Sunlight Paper, Singapore's sole toilet paper manufacturer, only produces toilet rolls found in public toilets. That means the toilet paper we use at home is 100% imported. And it's from three main countries, Malaysia, China and Indonesia. Mark says that in the event we do run out of toilet paper, his company is confident that they can repackage the jumbo rolls into smaller packs to be sold to consumers. But anyone who's actually used the jumbo rolls in public toilets would know that there's a huge difference in quality between those and the ones we use at home. So we are still entirely dependent on an overseas supply for the rolls that we use at home. Since the first round of panic buying in early February, authorities and retailers have come out to reassure the public that we will have enough toilet paper. And suppliers have committed to bringing in more. At this point in time, we have over 9 million uh, toilet rolls and stocks continue to come in. But with quarantines, reduced air travel and lockdowns disrupting normal business operations, how confident are our toilet paper suppliers about keeping Singapore fully stocked? So in order for us to run out of toilet paper, two things need to happen. Ever since COVID-19 broke, this has become such a hot commodity. So much so, that it's got its own spin-off. And very much like the real toilet paper we use, these are flying off the shelves. So far, I've learned that when it comes to the toilet paper that we use at home, Singapore is entirely dependent on overseas manufacturers. In mid-February, Asia Pulp and Paper one of Singapore's top three suppliers of non-house brand toilet rolls was told by supermarkets to bring in as much toilet paper as they could to add to the nation's stockpile. And they delivered to the tune of some 10 million toilet rolls over two months. 10 million rolls. Now that sounds like a lot of toilet paper. I assume that means we have more than enough in our stockpile? Best person to answer that? Bernard Tan the man who spent three weeks planning shipments into Singapore. So basically, mm -hmm. Singapore now has a much more healthy stockpile of toilet paper, of all things, toilet paper. In addition to that, the company has also undertaken to extend our order period to six months. We usually fulfill two months of delivery in advance so that we can trigger the whole supply chain. But we're now planning for six months so that we are in a better position to fulfill Singapore's needs. And that's just one supplier. APP is not the whole market, right? So there's no need to rush. If the supply chains are not affected, actually what we have done is to start supplying Singapore well in advance of usage. And what makes toilet paper is wood chips. And the biggest supplier of wood chips in the region is by far Indonesia. And APP has a sizable amount of concessions in uh, Indonesia. So on wood chips, we're not going to run out. Now, once you have wood chips, to convert into paper products, you need the fiber from the wood, and that needs to go through a process going through the mill and converting. In order for us to run out of toilet paper, two things need to happen. We need to run out wood chips, mm -hmm. and we need every country that we have converting facilities in to shut down. This is highly improbable. We have converting machines in Vietnam, in Thailand, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in China, in Australia. It's not going to happen. With this fear of running out, will prices actually go up? Well, we've, we've seen the order, uh, order sheets. The prices are remain the same for the next six months. We don't know, right? Obviously, uh, raw materials do go up and do go down. Um, but as far as we can see, uh, at the current moment, there's no indication at all. Whew, I feel more assured now. Singapore running out of toilet paper is highly unlikely. And it's good to know too that prices will remain stable, at least for now. But it does make me wonder, how much toilet paper do I actually need during a pandemic? But well, believe it or not, there's actually a website called howmuchtoiletpaper.com. Don't ask me why I know this, the site claims that it can compute how much toilet paper you use and if what you have at home is enough during times of crisis. Okay, let's try this out. I have about six toilet rolls. 
I visit the toilet about three times a day. The advanced options too, like number of wipes per trip, and number of sheets on the roll. So based on my input, if I have to stay home for 30 days, my six rolls are more than enough. The site is pretty amazing, but I wonder how accurate it is. I got in touch with its developer, Ben Sassoon, a 21-year-old student based in London. I really love how your website allows me to calculate how much toilet paper I actually need to survive a pandemic. Now, why did you decide to come up with this website? So, um, me and my friend, Sam Harris, he's an artist in London, we were talking about how in the UK, you couldn't buy toilet paper anywhere. Um, and we were running some numbers, kind of calculating how much toilet paper we use and figuring out if we would have, a, have enough to last the pandemic. Um, we made the website in about an hour and just sent it to a couple friends. Um, but then suddenly it started spreading and spreading and spreading and everyone started using it. And the next thing you know, 10 million people had used the website and it's grown beyond belief. So your website, how accurate do you think it is? We came up with a few key variables on toilet paper usage. When we actually launched, um, we didn't have that many to start with, but we were getting so many emails, hundreds and hundreds of emails, um, and adjusting it as we went along. Um, so it was really user-driven as well. So about 30,000 people in Singapore have used your website. Does the average person have enough toilet paper? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I can't give an exact answer. So what we can see is that people in Singapore aren't hoarding um, to the same levels as other country. That doesn't mean that they aren't hoarding at all, but not to the extreme levels that we've seen all around the globe. Market research estimates that Singapore uses 28 million rolls of toilet paper each month. That's about five rolls of toilet paper for each person every single month. We use so much of it that it's hard to imagine life before toilet paper. The first recorded use of paper for toileting purposes was with discarded writing paper way back in the 6th century in medieval China. Before that, people used whatever was handy from leaves, wool and hay to simply rinsing with water. The rise of toilet paper truly began in 1857 when sheets of toilet paper made of hemp were packaged and sold in the US. Toilet paper in roll form came about in 1890, but it had splinters due to crude production techniques. Most cheap paper was made from wood pulp, and it took about 45 years for techniques to improve before toilet paper was splinter-free. As manufacturers continued to develop the humble toilet paper, two-ply toilet paper was born. Continued research and development in this field resulted in softer, more absorbent and stronger versions of toilet paper. Today, there are so many varieties of toilet rolls for household use, and they come in a range of prices. Basic house brands from supermarkets can cost as low as 49 cents per roll and are usually made of recycled paper. While a brand name version of two ply costs about 56 cents per roll, three and four ply versions are about an extra 20 cents each. These are usually made of virgin paper pulp, which means they come directly from trees. There is also premium three-ply toilet paper that can cost upwards of $4.70 per roll. It's said to be thicker, softer and more absorbent than its lesser cousins. Less pricey but also under the premium range are bamboo versions said to be better for the environment as bamboo grows 30 times faster than trees and regrows as soon as it's cut. There are also scented versions and even antibacterial rolls. I'm curious, why the need for so many different types of paper that will eventually be flushed down the toilet bowl anyway? For some answers, I'm speaking to Sudip Lahiri, a marketing director from toilet paper giant Kimberly Clark, who only uses three-ply toilet paper. Sudip, why do we need so many different kinds of toilet paper? As time goes by, you kind of realize that people's needs evolve. They change over a period of time and we exist to serve those needs. So which is the most popular range 
of toilet rolls for Singaporeans? Singapore has a very strong bias towards significantly softer products versus what is available in, across the region. And specifically, it's going to be the, uh, the three-ply range that we have. There's also this other range of um, toilet rolls that I've seen on the shelves. Um, they put it down as antibacterial. Now, um, what does it mean when a toilet roll is antibacterial? Now, basically, for something to be antibacterial, uh, it needs to actually kill about 99.9% .9 of germs mm -hmm. within of five seconds of wiping. There are very rigorous tests that you need on dry tissue. It's very difficult to deliver that. Say for a layman like me, right? You know, when I go shopping for a toilet roll, um, what characteristics do I want to look for? So if I were to break it down, I think the three big things that one mm -hmm. needs to look at is definitely you want to make sure that it's, it delivers on the core stuff, which is that it can absorb, it's yeah. strong enough and it's soft. Absorbency, strength, and comfort. That's what we should be looking out for when choosing toilet paper. But with so many options out there, how do I know which one is the most value for money? I put some rolls to the test. Man, this is a messy job. Now, when I started my investigation, I never expected to be doing this. Testing different varieties of toilet paper. I've asked my producer to get her friends and family to loan me some of their precious toilet paper for an experiment. These six rolls differ in the number of plies, type of pulp, such as paper and bamboo, and of course, cost. But I don't know which is which as of yet, so I'll refer to them by alphabet. I'm going to be testing for three things. Comfort, that's how soft toilet paper feels against your skin. Absorbability, how well it absorbs water. Toilet paper that is more absorbent means you use fewer sheets when you go about your business. And dissolvability or strength, your toilet paper should hold up when wet but break down quickly when flushed or it might jam up your pipes when you use too much. I want to know which is the most value for money. First up, the comfort test. I'm wearing a blindfold, so it's truly just based on touch. Wow, this one is quite thin. This one feels like it's very it doesn't feel too nice. Okay, so after trying it out, I kind of felt that B and D were a little bit thin and coarse to the touch. C and F were all right, but they had this pattern on it that kind of makes it feel a little bit rough as well. I would definitely say that for me, the softest was E. Next, it's the soak through test. For this, I'm using a dropper to put the same amount of coloured water on each roll of toilet paper. The shorter the rollout, the better it is at absorbing water. From what I can see, it looks like roll C is the most absorbent roll. The blue dot kind of stops somewhere around here. Um, but if you follow me all the way up here, you can see that B is the least absorbent roll. The blue dot is the furthest among all. For the third test, I'll use an electric hand mixer to see how quickly I can break down three sheets of toilet paper. Each bowl has the same amount of coloured tap water and I'll start the timer at the same time I drop the toilet paper into the bowl. Man, this is a messy job. It took between 18 and 33 seconds to break down the toilet paper. So I found that among all the toilet rolls, the top three bowls were harder to disintegrate than the bottom three bowls D and F. E being the quickest and easiest to disintegrate as compared to B, which was quite hard to disintegrate even after a while and still kind of remained a bit clumsy. So turns out, E, my top pick for most comfortable and easiest on my plumbing, 
is three ply bamboo toilet paper and it's touted to be antibacterial. It costs about 86 cents per roll. C, which I picked as the most absorbent, is three ply paper pulp. It's slightly cheaper than my bamboo option. B, the worst performing across all three tests, is the cheapest at 49 cents per roll. It's two ply recycled paper. I think what surprised me the most actually was roll F because being the most expensive roll, I would have thought that it would stand out in some way and are be worth paying 90 cents for, but it didn't to me. But if you ask me what is value for money and what I would buy for myself, I would actually pick something that is three ply because I kind of like that kind of comfort. Um, and I also would pick something that is eco-friendly uh, because that's important to me. So I would pick roll E, which is the bamboo toilet paper roll. Well, if I'm going to be spending more on toilet paper, I need to know how to make it last longer. I'm meeting someone who helps people figure out life hacks on making better financial decisions in their everyday lives. From what type of house to buy, to the best cashback credit cards to use. So to find out the best way to stretch my dollar when it comes to toilet paper, I'm reaching out to Kenneth Fong. It's not so much about passing over the costs, or like how cheap or how expensive the toilet paper is that's more important. It's maybe how prudent we are and how we use toilet paper. Basic bathroom habits, right? So you can choose to fold your toilet paper for maximum absorbency and protection. And instead of wadding and everything, you can fold it. You know, instead of wasting all that precious real estate that is falling into like one ball. And we can always start with like a reasonable amount of squares and then we pair more if we need to instead of you know, just pulling like a large amount from the beginning. I never thought I'd spend so much time investigating toilet rolls. But this pandemic has created a lot of firsts. I now know why some people regard toilet paper as a prized commodity during times of crisis. I also found out that we're not running out anytime soon. So whether you settle for the basic roll or splurge on a luxurious one, I will never take toilet paper for granted. <laughs>